It's time now for the Kill the Can podcast. Good morning, everyone. Um, Just real quick before we get into this podcast, and during the intro to this podcast, I referenced that it's episode number 26. It's actually number 27. My bad. I apologize. Enjoy the podcast. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 26 of the Kill the Can podcast. My name is Chue. I hope things are well. Um, As I sit here today, it is the morning of Wednesday, February 7th, coming at you on my uh, on my commute on the way to work. Like I said, hope things are well. Um, let's see, it's, it's been about a week or so since the last episode of the podcast and episode 25, I talked to you about um, my good friend, Russ Fran Pro that we lost recently. You know, it was funny, I, I just had a thought this morning, you know, I found out about Fran Pro, I was doing some traveling for work. I was down in Orlando, Florida for about a week for work. And I realized this morning that that entire time that I was down in Orlando traveling for work, so multiple airline rides, multiple trips to the airport, multiple Ubers, buses, high stress environment, finding out a, 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 a friend, a brother had passed away. I never thought about dip one time during that entire trip. Um, and, and that was that was a pretty profound realization for me J- just this morning. Just, just as I hit record, I realized that I hadn't thought about dip that entire time that I was down there. Now, yes, the reason I knew Russ was through Kill the Can, and, and I suppose maybe in, in my mind, you know, I was I was connecting the two, you know, my addiction and Fran Pro together, but I never craved. I never thought about dip. It wasn't even a part of my mind. And, and I relay that story only to hopefully provide some reassurance to new quitters out there that there will be a time when you've got enough distance between you and your addiction where you're not fixating on it, you're not focusing on it, you're not worried about it, you're not nail biting, it's not it's not an issue. You 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 will get to a point where your quit will be on for lack of a better term, cruise control. Now, I say all of that, and then I also kind of take a step back and speak out of the other side of my mouth. I never want to forget about my addiction, and I haven't forgotten about it. During that entire time that I was gone, I still posted role. I still interacted with people from the site. But again, I I, I wasn't kind of nail-biting through it. And I hope that I hope that you know people out there that are struggling earlier in their quit take some solace in the fact that there are better days ahead. Um, last week I had a really cool opportunity. I got a, a, a Facebook message uh, early in the week last week from my college roommate, who I had not seen in 25 years. I had not seen him since college. And he sent me a note and he said, Hey, I'm going to be in town or, you know, I'm going to be in this town. I'm going to be at Kent state university uh, on, uh, on Thursday of last week. And he said, are you, you know, are you around? So uh, ironically enough, uh, my wife went to Kent state university. I live about 30 minutes from there. And my middle son had ironically enough had travel baseball practice that evening on the campus of Kent State University. So I said, absolutely, Jeff, I would love to get together. I would love to see you. And and it was awesome. I mean, we got together. We caught up. Um, like I said, I hadn't seen him in 25 years. You know, obviously, with through the advent of social media and texting and those kind of things, I had talked to him over the years. But uh, but we had not been face-to-face in that long. And it was, it was kind of funny. 
he uh, so obviously he knew me as Chewy, right? I uh, this was I think I've talked. I went to Indiana University, and you know I I, I knew I still to this day I know people that probably don't know my real name. Um, Jeff certainly knows my real name, but he you know he knows me as Chewy when he when he refers to me, he tells stories you know to his wife or what have you. Oh, I'm getting together with Chewy, blah blah blah. He you know that's so that's how he knows me. Um, and it's funny, I, I don't know that he and I have ever had a conversation about me quitting. You know, I quit, I quit dipping after I left college. Um, but he, he relayed a story to me while we were catching up, you know, so he, um, he said, did you know that I quit? And I, and I said to him, well, God, I, I Jeff, I didn't even realize that you were, I don't remember you ever being a dipper because he really wasn't in college. And so he relayed the story to me about how after college he he started dipping and then for several years he got into and he was uh he was using Zen pouches and he told me that um on his 44th birthday he was meeting a a, a colleague from work and he was out at the bar and he and he put his uh, an a, an open pack of Zins and a brand new pack. I think there was maybe one or two left in the first pack, and then a new one. And he set them on the bar. And his buddy relayed to him. He said, "Oh, you know, for a, you know, happy birthday. How old are you? Blah blah blah." And he said, "His buddy says, oh, you know what? I quit on my forty fourth birthday.' Just kind of ironically, right?" And Jeff told, called the bartender over and I think he kind of maybe took that as a sign and he called the bartender over and he says, could you do me a favor? Could you throw both of these two tins away? And that was the last time he ever touched a nicotine product. And I relay this story because like I said, I don't think Jeff and I had ever talked about me quitting. Like I said, I, I didn't even know he was a user and, and yet Jeff had seen over the years, kill the can, whether it's in his social feeds or, or stuff that I had shared or those kind of things. And it was just a really cool moment that, um, to hear that somebody else that kind of in my circle, um, was able to break their addiction. And I just thought that was really cool. Um, it didn't, it didn't hurt the fact that I was seeing, you know, my, my brother from another mother after 25 years. So it was really good to, to catch up with him. Jeff, if you're listening to this, it was awesome to see you brother. And, uh, let's make sure that it wasn't, uh, it's not another 25 years before we get to back together again. So, um, <clears throat> I got a note the other day from a smokeless alternative manufacturer. I, I will not mention their name here. But, uh, you know, kind of business, business is struggling, right? And, for, you know, for a variety of reasons, you know, uh, we could talk about just kind of the economy in general, the economy kind of sucks. You know, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of companies, especially small business companies, which a lot of these smokeless alternative companies are that really have not even come back fully from the pandemic, right? And so a lot of them are struggling. And, and I say that to kind of remind you all out there, if you've got a, 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 a you know, a mom and pop, a small business, a company that you really like, um, I, I would, I would remind you to support them, right? Um, especially, you know, in, in the kind of kill the can world, if there's a smokeless alternative company out there that you really like, support them. You know, whether, whether that's buying their product, whether it is interacting with their social media, whether it is sharing something on your timelines, telling other, you know, family, friends, other quitters about your experience. Maybe it's leaving a review on the Kill the Can site, you know, about, hey, I, I tried, I tried Black Buffalo, I tried Smoky Mountain, I tried Teza, you know, whatever it is, I tried it, I loved it. Or even, hey, you know what? Even if you didn't really love it, right? Um, sharing your experience with those products, supporting those companies, supporting those products, it really does go a long way 
to to help those companies. Um, I know I'm I'm a big fan. You know, I always try to share information. I try to share websites, share links. Um, you know, if I've got samples, I like to pass them along. Um, you know, to quitters after I do my reviews and those kind of things. So again, just kind of a, a little reminder. If uh, you know, if there's something that you guys can do out there to help the little mom and pops of the world, um, I would I would recommend that you do it. Um, final topic that I wanted to touch on here this morning: quitter meets. I, I think I've talked on the podcast in the past about the importance of quitter meets. If I haven't, I'll actually have to go back and look. If I haven't, I, I will probably do an entire episode about quitter meets and why I think they're so important. You know, obviously since the pandemic, they have kind of gone away or they've really scaled back pretty significantly. Thankfully, we are kind of done with COVID, done with this idea of social distancing, done with, um, you know, kind of not getting together, not being with with one another. And again, I'm not, I feel like getting into the whole is COVID over discussion. I'm not suggesting that it's not still, you know, you don't need to, to, to be leery of it. Um, but again, just kind of in general, we're kind of over that hump. Um, but I, I got, I was on a Zoom call the other night with some very good friends of mine and we are in the process, or really they are in the process of putting together what will be the 14th annual, or I guess the 14th iteration of the Pennsylvania Kill the Can Quitter Meet. That Quitter Meet is going to be held in the Phoenixville, Pennsylvania area on Friday, June 21st, and Saturday, June 22nd of this year. The, the, you know, there's going to be further details forthcoming in terms of what you can expect and hotel arrangements and, and specific locations and those kind of things. Um, typically in years past, and I think we're going to do it this year as well. Uh, the first year is kind of hosted by uh, a Kill a Can member, Bulker and his wife, at their home and in the Phoenixville area. And then Saturday evening is hosted by Theo Threewood and his wife in, in their home. And it's an, it's an awesome event. And it is not just for quitters that have been around the block. It's not just for quitters that have several years under their belt. Um, there will, there there will certainly be a lot of those, but if you've got 30 days quit, 50 days quit, hell, if you've got three days quit at that point, I would urge you to attend a quitter meet. I would urge you to get together face to face, meet some people because what I can guarantee you is once you do that and once you meet somebody face to face and you have these conversations and you share stories and you look somebody in the eye that you've been posting role with for however many days you've been giving your promise, you will elevate your quit. You will elevate the accountability of your quit and you will in drastically increase your chances of success long-term staying quit. So, um, you know, we, as part of this Zoom call we were, where we were having this conversation about this, this meet, you know, the idea was brought up that, you know, the last several meets that we've had have been filled with quitters that are quit for several, several years. Um, and, and, you know, I think we're lacking a little bit of the we'll say the quote unquote younger quitters out there. And I don't mean younger in terms of age. I mean, younger in terms of their quit. And I wanted to come on, announce the quit dates or the dates of that quitter meet and start the conversation about these meets are not just for people that have known one another for years and years and have been quit for years and years and have their quit on cruise control. In fact, I would make the argument 
that a quitter meet might even be more important for somebody who is earlier in their quit than somebody who is on quote unquote cruise control. So like I said, mark your calendar Friday, June 21st, Saturday, June 22nd in the Phoenixville, Pennsylvania area. Um, these are awesome events. You get together, you talk about your quit, you build brotherhood, you build accountability. Like I said, more details coming forward, but put that on your calendar and please, please, please do not discount the idea of going to a quitter meet just because you are early in your quit. All right. That's all I got for today. Quitters. I will talk to you soon. I'm honored to be quit with you. Have a good one. Late. Join us again next time for another edition of the kill the can podcast.